Howdy folks, it's Lisa from QITV, Quilting in the Valley. This is our premiere episode of our new show. We're very excited. So we are gonna have three different segments every time we do a show. One segment is gonna feature a guest from the quilting industry. We are gonna show you some really cool things that you don't know about quilting. I cannot wait to get you into some of the neat stuff we've got lined up. So we're gonna have a fabric designer that's gonna show you how she fabric designs, how she uses technology to get an idea to the printers to make fabric for you. We're gonna have, who else are we gonna have? We're gonna have a batik designer to show you how batiks are made. We're gonna have a pattern designer to show you how she designs patterns from start to in the envelope in the stores. Then we're gonna show you some common tools that we use for our quilting journeys and we're gonna show you good, better, and best for those tools so that you have a range of things to choose from to make your quilting journey easier. Every week we're gonna show you a new technique as well. So we're gonna tell you all about, for example, needles today. I bet you don't know some of the things there are to know about needles. Next week we're gonna talk quarter inch seams and then maybe the week after that we'll talk about fabric, I don't know. We're gonna teach you something new, hopefully, every week. And it's gonna be fun because we are the Fearless Quilters. So let's get started. Okay, so today we have Miss Jerry Ann all the way up here from Texas, which I understand is 850 miles. Mm -hmm. And she has Annie McHugs and the wonderful rulers to make these fabulous Dresden plates. So let's talk. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. So let me tell you my inspiration. Our quilt guild said we were going to be doing Dresden's in the 2019 show. And all I could visualize was a room full, a quilt show full of precious little Dresden's, right? Which, is, they're fabulous, but I wanted to try to do something different. That's what designers do and quilters mm. do and so forth. So I went home two days later. I was in my morning quiet time and I saw a vision of a Dresden blade with a window in, um, in, the, in the blade. And I was stunned, what is that? I mean, I just had to stop and think, what is that? Now we have this. This is the shape. This is how you cut a Dresden mm -hmm. blade. And this is the window, the upper window. And there are two windows. So here's a lower window. And it, this is where you put the fabric in from behind. Friends, it is so easy. You can't believe how easy it is. I have taken um, great pains to make it easy because I don't want anything that's really, really fussy. So let me show you some of the things that we've done with it. Well, here's Here's one right here. This is just three of the 12 that go in um, a full Dresden. And here I've just taken a quarter of those, which is three. But all of this fabric is fussy cut and then brought in from behind mm -hmm. on the Dresden. And this precious little Halloween quilt it is so cute. So we'll show you some pictures of that. Let me get this. We're gonna shout out this designer again. Yes. So this is Meg Hockey from Crab Apple Hill. This is her Halloween line, her 2020 Halloween line, and it's Maywood Fabrics. It is adorable. So there's all these cute little witches going about their daily business with their cats and, and their, their pumpkins and, and their, their flowers. And their beehives. And their bees. And they're so cute. And then this is also fussy cut into the, to the blade. So that's cute. And then there are some quilts over my shoulder on the ladder that are also dressed in. The top one is an ABC panel that I just did for Dresden's and that. Then there's some Maywood um, Happiness is Homemade. Oh, it's cute That's fabrics. Cute. So that was a 10-inch uh, square that I used the tools in the set. So let me show you that. Here we are, we are gonna get started with a demo and we are gonna learn how to make Dresden blades the Annie McHugs way. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so you will cut 12 blades. I take 10 inches with the fabric all the way across. I lay them this way and then you know back and forth and back and forth to get my 12 blades. So then I have my individual blades set. 
I tend to work on the back just because on a dark fabric you, you can, can see. see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I use a couple of tools. These are my tools. I personally love um, a good friction pen. I am going to make an upper window, friends. See this upper window? That's what I'm going to demonstrate real quickly on how to do that. Do you see what I just did? To make this quick and simple, I have the next step already done. So I cut out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be turning these edges under. Do you see that? I have cut inside the window. This little piece falls out and I want finished edge, not raw edge. Okay, so are you leaving a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch there? About. Well, you need at least a quarter of an inch. I'm an about kind of girl, so you know, yeah. it's close. It doesn't have to be if exact. You are exactly. So if you're concerned, you can measure. I have a there quarter inch seam allowance printed on the tool, so you could, you know, follow it exactly. Okay. And there are, I have friends who would do that would anyway, do that, yes. even if they were confident with their quarter of an inch seam. As we were taught in home ec, mm -hmm. Lisa, did you take home ec? I did. Did I you did. make the apron? No, we made a wraparound skirt. Everybody up here made the aprons, so oh. it was gingham, and you had to do hucking. Oh. And then you gathered it, and we've all got our aprons. Well, I had Miss Tucker, and I was in eighth grade, so she had reading glasses that went like this so she could see over them. <laughs> and for a year, I thought she wore them upside down. <laughs> That was me being an eighth grader, you well, know, right? <laughs> what can I say? Who would we know about these things now? <laughs> so, exactly. I was thought I knew everything. So, friends, my best friend in this process is glue. This is the great sewing glue, and the reason I use it is to prepare it to go to the sewing machine. Okay, so this is not how it's going to be held together. I am going to stitch this all together. Now, you'll notice that I put glue on every snip spot mm -hmm. and then just a tad in between every single snip. Now, I roll this over from the corners and finger press just for uh, and making sure that I roll very, very well so that I won't have that raw edge in the corner, right? Mm -hmm. So I roll it back so that spot will not be vulnerable. I've done this a few a few times, so <laughs> I can do it fairly quickly. And now it is ready for the iron. So because I didn't bring my iron to the set with me, I pre-ironed one. I know. She's thinking I was ahead. trying. I was trying. She's always thinking ahead. Okay, so friends, look. Look how clean and Ready house. that is for a lit. Yes, looks like a birdhouse to looks me. Looks like a little birdhouse. So now oh, I idea for your next one. Different birds. Oh, in each of them. That means I have to go shop in your store one more time. Different birds in each <laughs> of them. Real. I'll do it. I can do that. That would be adorable. So Just I'm using Carnaby. It would. Yeah. So you go to your yardage now for whatever you're going to put in your window, and you use the same tool. So on this one, I drew the little house top down here, and because I'm going to um, put it in the window, it needs to be a little bit larger. Right. So I give myself a quarter of an inch all the way around. So Which, this one's going to be the opposite of the last one. You're not going to cut inside, you're going to cut outside. Precisely. You need, I'm generous with my quarter of an inch, friends. If I'm not generous with anything else, I have to be generous with my quarter of an inch because I need these two to go together. And to get ready for the sewing machine, I hit this with glue one more time. Once I do that, I flip it over and look at that. It just fits mm -hmm. like it should, like it's supposed to, like it was made to do it. It's Fancy amazing. that. <laughs> <laughs> and friends, it happens the same way every time. It's just like a just miracle. <laughs> every single time. So now I have this completely ready. I always hit my glue with an iron. When you hit it, your glue with an iron, it melts it, and it has that strong hold until you can do all 12 of these and go to the sewing machine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Once I get to the sewing machine, then of course we do what we love to do most, which is sew. When I stitch, I'm gonna top stitch all the way around this little window and that will 
permanently secure this mm -hmm. fabric, these two pieces of fabric together. But I always start in the bottom right hand corner. That's because the last that's place the last look. place they look, right? Yep. And so if they're going to be, how did that happen? How did you do that? I'm going to make them work for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're going to go to the last place they look. I know, right? I thought through this story. Always thinking. I'm telling you. So friends, I go literally right along the edge. I mean, it's not, it's, it's just as close to the edge as I can make it. So you're not worried about no. eighth of an inch, quarter no. inch, whatever. You're just, no, just yeah. close. So once I have that stitched down, I am now ready to make my Dresden, right? So I have 12 of these all top stitched down. Dresdens are the easiest things in the world. Please don't be intimidated. You fold this right sides together. You stitch a quarter of an inch across the top. And for a lot of my projects, I do the same thing, a quarter of an inch across the bottom. When you do that, and you flip it inside out, it comes out with a point, just like this. Y'all, it's magic every and time. And the bottom, too. And the bottom, too. Okay. So then you don't have to applique anything over it. It's a finished edge. All, you know, all is well in the world when you mm -hmm. have two finished edges and you don't have to worry about it. So you make 12 of those, and then you just stitch them together, like, like so, right? You just right sides together, stitch them together. Generally, I do three, and then just make sure that they're, it's a square, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And then add three and three and three, and then put all of them together. So these blades, 12 of these blades, make a whole plate. So that's where a Dresden plate is. That's the finished plate. Then you lay it on your background. You pin it down. You top stitch all the way around the outer edge and the inner edge. So when Sharon made this precious quilt, she put a little circle applique right there in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. If you use the pointed edges, you don't have to, you do need to stitch around, but it's it's on the background fabric. It actually makes a little secondary design, like a little starburst in the middle. Yes, it does, and it's cute. Yeah. I like that, It's and it's fast. So friends, let me show you what comes in the tool set. This is 10 inches tall. Mm -hmm. So guess what that works on? <laughs> Layer cakes. Yes. Any pre-cut, right? Yeah. So in this upper window, so when I had to manufacture this in this upper window, we're quilters. We don't like scraps. Mm -hmm. I mean, we love scraps, but we don't throw we don't things like away, to, yeah. right? And I didn't want to throw away the acrylic that went in here. So I said, hey, in this piece, let's put a circle because I can use that, I can use that for a window instead of the birdhouse looking, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I could use this and I could just make one. Which is the flower. With just the flower, right? Okay, so one day I decided, I was thinking of all the different combos that we could do. And I started thinking, oh my goodness, so I made a list. And I got, and I had 24 different combos just using this tool. And I decided, okay, I'm gonna make a quilt just using those. I bet I know where it is. Let's look. Can, may Can we, we look? May we look? I think it's over here. That is 24. That has 24 different blades that you can make just using this template and the different windows you can do. Do you see the second window here to the left? Mm -hmm. That window is full, so when I draw it, and I'll do that right here on the paper, just so y'all can see. So quilters I know are smart, and do you see how that left a little open bridge? Filler. <laughs> we can draw a straight line, or we can even use the edge of this for a straight line. That makes a whole window. So all of those windows can be made doing this. So let me show you what else comes in here. I've, the round circle, if I had this, I put it in here, I just draw that little circle, then I have a circle. Mm -hmm. So I can do all kinds of things with this. Well, one day I was thinking, oh my, what if I don't want a circle? What if I want a different shape? Because I really love hexagons, Kay. right? So, I mean, you can do some really fun things with that. So I created an accessory pack. So here's my little, there are four shapes. 
it's that same exact pentagon that fits right in here. You don't have to buy the tool all over again. You just buy the accessory set. And then the hexagon, you draw the hexagon uh -huh. instead of that. So the four shapes are a teardrop, a heart, a hexagon, and a petal or an orange peel type petal. And all four of these just fit right in the tools. So the five inch, this works on the charm packs. And let me show you that. I happen to have a quilt in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Everybody should. <laughs> Where else would they be, right? Other than the bed. So the five inch tool makes this small Dresden. This is about um, a little over 10 inches wide. Mm -hmm. So it's small and can go into, you know, smaller mm -hmm. spots. But I fussy cut in each of these windows, these little snowmen, snowman. right? Now on this one, I did do an applique because I wanted it to have kind of a snow right. flake look. Mm -hmm. So you just make your design choices based on what you're, on what you're doing. Here, I had a snowflake falling off the quilt, and so I did a half. Okay. Right? And I know people are looking at this and they're gonna ask. It's fun, isn't it? It is fun. It is fun. I know how you did it. Yes, it's not a secret. But you know everything. No, I do not know everything, <laughs> but I know this. <laughs> so I'm a long arm quilter. I did all the quilting on this quilt, and after I had it quilted, I decided that I wanted it to have even more snowflakes. And on my long arm quilting machine, I have a foot that is a couching foot. So I just ran my yarn through that and did the design. I did it all over so it would look like falling snowflakes. So it's just couched on with my long arm. With this fluffy yarn, which you just want to play with. And if you have a domestic sewing machine, you can get yourself a couching foot. Couching foot will work the same on a domestic sewing machine. You're going to free motion the couching foot, you, you pull your yarn up into the insert in your couching foot, and then as you free motion, the foot will put that yarn right where you're stitching so that you will do a little stitch over it. And it's, it's fun to do. You ought to try it. Oh, it's so much fun. It is so much fun. And it just adds that texture. In this quilt, you have both from that one tool set, you've got the 5-inch yes. and the 10-inch, but correct. you've used them both in this quilt. Yes. So we can show you that. So there's the big snowman. So we have to make the bed again. You know how that goes, <laughs> right? I think it's actually very cute that you use both sizes. I loved that, and it just looks like um, snowflakes falling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on this little one, the the snowmen are fussy cut, so they're, you know, not the same next door to each other. I used the points in the center, mm -hmm. which was, you know, just a little added embellishment and a little snowflake in the bottom window. So then, um, and I had the you know, the snowflakes falling from the top and coming down to the bottom. So I used four full ones and a couple, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of the small ones. And, you know, sometimes you just want to keep embellishing. Yeah. Right? So all of this came from the tool set, the original tool set. This is cute. And you have all of that in your shop. I do. I do. And if you wanted to learn more about this, you can always visit Annie mm -hmm. dot com. Yep. And you will find a link on your website, yes, to your YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, you know, all the social media sites. Annie McHugs, one G, so A N N I E M C H U G S dot com exactly. or quiltinginthevalley.com. Either one. Either one. So you can find you on my Annie McHugs page, too. So, ah. you know, we're all good. All it's right, all then. good. Okay. Thank you, Lisa, so Thank much. Thank you for showing us this. This is great. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, so here we are. We're going to do a little bit of skill building here. We're going to talk about needles. So this is my really first tutorial on this, and this is probably the single most important thing that will make the difference in whether or not you have got a successful sewing project or not. And a lot of people don't know about needles. And the reason you don't know about needles is because, and I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions on anyone's age, but I'm going to say I'm old. And when I was younger, I used a mechanical sewing machine and it did not have any bells and whistles and it didn't have any automated tension and it didn't care what needle I had in or what thread I had to go with it. And it just stitched all the time. But that is not the case anymore. So today's sewing machines are fine tuned computers and they auto set tension and they change sewing 
configurations based on what type of stitch you're going to do. So if you don't have the correct needle and the correct size to match the thread that you're using, your end result is not going to be great. And I think it's just we haven't had a lot of education about the whole needle thread, you know, the TNT, thread needle tension, TNT, makes all the difference in your sewing projects today with today's machines. So let's talk a little bit about a needle. So here is a needle. It's a very big needle. It won't fit in my sewing machine. Um, but this is a lovely uh, model from Schmetz that shows us the different parts of the needle. Most of our sewing machines take the flat side of the needle to the back. Yes, there are some singers that take it to the side and there are some weird machines that take round needles. But for the most part, our machines take needles with a flat side to the back. On the front of this very self same needle, there is a groove down the length of the needle and the shaft or the scarf of the needle right here. This groove, believe it or not, folks, is designed for the thread you're using to fit not loosely, but also not snugly inside that channel, then feed into the eye, which is shaped different ways for different techniques. And then of course it has the tip of the needle, which is shaped different ways for different techniques. If the size thread you're using for the needle you're using doesn't fit correctly in that groove, you're going to have tension issues. You're going to have skipping stitches and you may have thread breaks. So I had somebody in just yesterday um, who was saying, hey, I'm having terrible trouble with uh, free motion quilting. It bird nests and then my thread breaks. And I said, well, what size needle are you using? And she says, a quilting needle. Said, yes. What size quilting needle are you using? Well, it's a quilting needle. Yes. <laughs> they come in sizes. So for example, this is a Microtex needle. There are three different sizes that I'm holding here. I have a 70, an 80, and a 90. A Microtex needle. The hole in the needle is formed kind of like this. It is designed for straight forward and back stitching, not for sideways. So if you're trying to use a Microtex needle for free motion quilting, you're going to break thread because it's going to get hung up on the side of the eye of the needle. The point on a Microtex needle is acute or fine. It's, it's very sharp. What that means is you're going to leave much smaller holes in the quilting that you do or the piecing that you do. So we use sharps, Microtex, for all of our piecing. And we use them in one of these three sizes to match the thread. So if you're using Coates and Clark's all-purpose thread, it's a heavy thread. You want to use a 9014 needle. 9014, the 90 and the 14 mean the exact same thing. 90 is European, 14 is Imperial us. We do things by the foots and the inches instead of the millimeters. So 9014. That's a bigger needle to go with bigger thread. If you're using, say, Aurafil 50 weight thread, which is my preferred thread for piecing, it's a finer thread, leaves a, a flatter seam, you're going to use a 7010 or a 7511, a much smaller needle. And that thread is going to fit right in that groove and work very smoothly in your machine. If you're quilting, quilting needles come in exactly the same sizes. So you're going to win and make sure that you're using the correct size needle with the correct size thread. If you're used to using universal needles for piecing, try a Microtex. You will be surprised how much nicer your stitching looks. Uh, a universal needle is a semi ball tip needle, so it leaves a larger hole and distort your fabric a little bit more when you're piecing. So I'm going to show you something on my machine. So in this particular example, I'm using a Bernina. On my screen, the utility stitches or stitches for utility sewing, mending, straight stitch, seam sewing for garments, that kind of stuff, are all on this front screen. I have auto tension on this machine. So this number one stitch, you can see I have 5.25 for my tension right up here. And it also sets my presser foot pressure for me. If I, for example, want to go in and do something different, let's say I'm going to, um, I'm going to sew on a knit. Let's say I'm going to sew on a medium weight knit and I'm going to put a, a hem in. And I set that for this machine. You'll notice that it changes everything. It's automated today. So our, our, our machines are little computers. They are much smarter than we are. 
and they tell the, the workings of the machine how to operate. So right now that switched my tension to a three. It told me to change my foot. It, told, it changed my presser foot pressure. And if I don't change my needle to match what it told me to do and to match my thread, all of this work this machine is doing is to naught. It's like putting vegetable oil in a Porsche. You wouldn't do that. You wanna put the right oil in the car to get the best performance. Same thing for your machines. You need to get the right needle and the right thread for the technique that you're doing. And we should be changing our needles about every eight hours of sewing. So if you start to hear your needle going thunk, 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 change your needle. They're like a buck. Your machines nowadays cost a great deal of money. A dollar for a needle to make it perform the way it's designed to perform is a little cost. So change your needles and get the right ones. If you are unsure, there are aids out there available. So this is a nice little book called Know Your Needles. And it talks about the differences in all the different needles and what you use them for. Get something like that to help you. Um, and if you have one of today's machines, like this one, where you can go in and you can set a needle minder, you can, so uh, let's say I'm, I don't know, let's say I got a universal 80 in there. I can set this so that when I'm finished with this project, I shut my machine down, I come back two days later, I don't have to guess what's in my machine, and you can make sure that you're putting the right needles in for the right projects. Okay, that's our tip for today. So we're gonna do our good, better, best presentation. So um, rulers. So when you're using your rotary cutter and rulers, um, your cutting accuracy is like one third of the success of your project in the end. You can get off a little bit and it won't make a huge difference. But if you think about um, a lot of the quilts that you're dreaming about making and you count the number of seam intersections there are from the left to the right, Multiply that number of seam intersections by 1 16th of an inch. That makes a huge difference from the top to the bottom. If you're off that much on this side versus this side, it can make a huge difference to your, your quilt, your finished product overall. So we're going to talk about accuracy in cutting. And the first part that you want to make sure you have handled in accuracy in cutting is making sure you have a good ruler that's going to get you the best results. If you are height challenged, one of the things you're gonna notice is as you're cutting, when you get up to here, you have a hard time reaching up here and you're pushing against this ruler and your ruler's always gonna have the habit of going like this. Even if you're not height challenged, if you press against the side of your ruler as you're cutting with your rotary cutter, sometimes when you get up here, you're extending, you push that ruler out of the way. Height challenged people find that they can't get their hand all the way in the middle of the ruler, so they're doing like this as they're cutting up and it gets pretty far out. You're extended pretty far. And sometimes it's hard to get the accuracy all the way along that cut. There are rulers to help you with that. So this particular ruler, this is an Omni grid. This is available at a lot of different stores. It is marked well, so you can see all the markings. This is one of the rulers you should have in your repertoire. You want a six by 24 inch ruler because that's for cutting with the fabric cuts. This ruler, while it is easy to read, is also pretty slippery. So unless you are at the right height on your cutting table, and by the way, when you're cutting, keep a couple fingers on the fabric and a couple fingers on the ruler, splayed right in the middle of the ruler, and cut. Try not to have all, your whole hand up here because you don't have control of your fabric and your ruler. When you're cutting with this ruler, if you are really good at controlling that ruler and not letting it slip, then this is a fabulous ruler. So this is our good. Good. Let's talk better. So this is from Creative Grids. On the back of this ruler, you see these kind of frosted look parts right in there. And if you feel them, they're kind of gritty. They are made to grip your fabric. They don't grip until you push down. So when you get your hand on there and you push down, this ruler will not slip as badly as that one. It's not really going to do much if you don't keep it in place. So it doesn't grip the fabric, but it will stay in one place if you've got a good grip on the ruler. So this is our better. 
creative grids. And here is our best. This is Quilter Select. And this is actually, I think this is an eight and a half because this is the one I had open and available. But it comes in a six or a six and a half by 24. This is the eight and a half by 24. This, the entire back of this is coated with this almost rubbery feel. If I put this on this fabric, put some pressure on it, it's not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, my fabric will move with this ruler as opposed to the other way around. There is a knob that they make to go on this ruler to make it easier to move to get your next cut uh, because it is actually difficult to get this ruler to slide on your fabric. So if you're looking for the best, you're going to look for the quilter select because this one is not going to let that fabric slip and in the long run that's going to save you a lot of money in miscuts in fabric. So again, what do we have here? We have good, nice measurements, easy to use. You have to do all of the controlling yourself. We have better. This is the creative grids. It has some grippy strips on it. Again, it's up to you putting the pressure on it to keep it in place. And we have best. This is Quilter Select. You put it on the fabric, it will not move. That's our tip for today.